the 50th anniversary of Jackie Robinson becoming the first African American, the first black man to play in the major leagues. The social implications of Jackie Robinson are just enormous. We knew we had to do something that really was different, unique, aberrational. You were at the game, I was at the game. Life is not important except in the impact it has on other lives. And that's what he stood for and that's what he's all about. I'll say this is a homage to a great American. It's a big event that even makes the president come out. That was the young spike. Thousands of fans, including the president of the United States, travel tonight here to Shea Stadium on Jackie Robinson Parkway to honor the man who changed the complexion of the game and of this country forever. I remember so clearly seeing all these people from all walks of life and all backgrounds give this supreme baseball honor to a man who made baseball better but made America better by making baseball better. Spike, 75 years ago, Jackie Robinson is standing right where you're at in the batter's box. This is history. This is the exact place where home plate was at Ebbets Field. Why don't we read it? Why don't you read it? Well, it says, site of Ebbets Field home plate, home of the Brooklyn Dodgers, 1913 to 1957. At this location on April 15, 1947, Jack Roosevelt Robinson Integrated Major League Baseball. That's what the plate says here. Right here in Brooklyn, New York. Thank you very much, Mr. Ricky. I'm certainly delighted with my contract. It's the most powerful and important moment in baseball history. I can't imagine what he felt like the first day he walked into that all-white locker room and had the eyes, and they were like piercing daggers looking at him. Most of everybody was thinking, why is he here? What is he here for? And then think about the pressure. It's tough enough to hit a 95-mile fastball, but also knowing that that thorn at your head, yeah. you're being spiked. What are your early recollections of, of Jackie Robinson? When did that first hit your, your well, mind and your scope? You know, he came to the Dodgers just a year after I was born. So in a way, I, when I came alive to baseball, Jackie Robinson was kind of a constant. We got a TV when I was 10, and I watched him every time I could on television. Jackie wallops a home run. Robinson scores. Jackie Robinson singles to center. I always thought of, when I was making every argument I could for equal treatment, I would always just use Jackie Robinson. He had such an impact on me. So when did you first hear about Jackie Robinson? Your family talked about well, it? Sitting around during the summer when I was too young to play baseball with the big kids. Back then, we had sandlot ball. And everybody wanted to be Jackie Robinson. Everybody want to hit the ball, like everybody want to steal a base. My cousins and my big brothers and my uncles, they all wanted to be him. The reason why I love sports is, is my father. He would tell me about Jackie Robinson. And he was an era where all black America followed Jackie Robinson. You might not be a Brooklyn Dodger fan, but everybody would say, how did Jackie do today? And people, I think, still don't understand the burden Jackie had. When you have the weight of the entire race on your shoulders. Plus, he made a deal with Branch Rickey, you know. Branch has him down, look, you can't retaliate. He talked about all the people who are going to be anti. He said, we're going to have some people on our side, but we really are not going to have very many allies. We're going to have to do this thing simply by the box score. And you've got to turn your cheek at every opportunity. You want to know whether I could do it. I will say this. Jackie Robinson's skin was 10 times thicker than Bo Jackson's. 
he absorbed all of that for us. Rachel told me so much stuff was pent up. It took a toll on his health. When you can't let something out, frustration, anger, I'm not talking about violence, but were you at that keep stuff pent up? He was 53 and died. Look, way older. You make a sacrifice, and you know there's gonna be, you know, repercussions from that sacrifice. But if you're so, your belief is so total in what you're fighting for is the truth. I'm extremely proud and pleased to be here this afternoon, but must admit I'm going to be tremendously more pleased and more proud when I look at that third base coaching line one day and see a black face managing in baseball. Thank you very much. He paid a toll, but he, he did it for not just black people, he did it for America, he did it for the world. 1997. 25 years ago, retiring Jackie Robinson's number 42. What do you remember from that night? I remember Bud Selig, and I remember how proud he was that this was the first time we were going to retire a number across all teams. In honor of Jackie, Major League Baseball is taking the unprecedented step of retiring his uniform number, number 42, in perpetuity. I remember sitting with Rachel and thinking that one reason Jackie's legacy was so rich, so vivid, so alive was because of her. It's my passionate hope that we can take this reawakened feeling of unity and use it as a driving force so that each of us can recommit to equality of opportunity for all Americans. He was uh, honoring a great American. Today I think every American should say a special word of thanks to Jackie Robinson and to the members of the Dodger team who made him one of their own and proved that America is a better, stronger, richer country when we all work together and give everyone a chance. Of all the things you did in baseball, where does retiring number 42 sit? Number one. Jackie Robinson, day and night in the major leagues, and every player in his honor wearing number 42. How did it come about all of them are wearing 42? Every year they celebrate it. And I'm like, how are you going to celebrate something and not wear his number? And so I called Bud at home. We talked for a little while, and he said, I got a great idea. You know, would it be possible if I wore 42 on Jackie Robinson Day? And he says, uh, we're a go, but, you know, can everybody wear it? I said, the more the merrier. Junior drives one. Deep right field. That's gone. I wanted to wear it to just honor him in my own special way, but to have everybody do it, it's been an unbelievable thing. When you see everybody wearing the number 42, how does that make you feel? That's mad respect. That's mad love. That lets you know that he is still the man. Simple as that, he's the man. He planted the seeds. He cultivated baseball for the guys of color. Everything that I did, everything that you did, everything that young baseball players now is doing, all of that is cultivated from Jackie Robinson planting that seed. Being from Brooklyn mm -hmm. and Jackie playing in Brooklyn, mm -hmm. did that take on a different significance? Oh yeah, look. Go to do the right thing. What, what was Mookie wearing? He wore number 42. 42. He wore Jackie's jersey. Jackie knew the impact he had, and he recognized the time and the platform he had, and 
very few people or or putting that moment or giving that opportunity where like it, you could really do some good here. Yeah, that's Jackie. That's Jackie. When you see 42, you can't help but think about Jackie Robinson. What's your thoughts of the significance of that number? Well, it means a lot to me because I was the 42nd president and the 42nd governor of my state. And so wow. I remember when I became the 42nd governor of Arkansas thinking, this is cool, I got Jackie Robinson's number. <laughs> and I think people need to be reminded from time to time, as you are doing now, that it was retired, who Jackie Robinson was, and why it was retired. And as long as that keeps going, then every new generation of children can come to understand why it matters so much. And the number will live on because it will stand for something other than a four and a two.